Welcome to the name game. Workout number 141 is Iron Cross. As many rounds as possible in 12 minutes complete. Three strict handstand push-ups, three deadlifts at 275 for males, 185 for females. And then 30 crossover single unders. You will continue to build in that fashion. So round two will be six strict handstand push-ups, six deadlifts, and once again, 30 crossover single unders after that round. Nine strict handstand push-ups, nine deadlifts, 30 crossovers etc. Athletes will continue to build in this fashion by three reps per round. And we're off. This is Brennan, aka Dubby. It's a nickname that a lot of people call him. Um, so, yeah, W's 15. So, uh, he's definitely still growing a lot. Got some, as all teens do, like a, a big trajectory for strength ahead of him. Um, so, like, still, in this case, his bar is 185. So, most of the time, for, for all my teen athletes, I'm usually scaling weights back just because that's what they're also required to do at, at their respective ages. So, just for people a little bit of context for the, the workout here. Um, but, obviously, gymnastics are really good. Um, Chris was watching his uh, cycle speed on the handstand push-ups. Like, whoa, super impressive. But, uh, to be honest, this is why I had him do one of this workouts is because we were working on some hinging strength. And uh, so, we kind of see him where the deadlifts were at and also, like, Knew that the handstand push-ups would be good, and this would be sort of like a, a fun workout for him to test uh, because of that. But Chris, you were you at this workout, so you've got any like uh, thoughts around it of how people should attack it, what your sort of idea was behind it? Yeah, I mean, I think this is your classic hinge push, lower body hinge, upper body push combo, and then you know, in the jump rope, um, kind of think think about the. I think we had an open workout once that maybe had deadlift, handstand push-ups, and double unders in it one time. So it's a pretty classic combo. And then I tried to make it a heavier barbell and then a harder upper body push and a higher skill with the jump rope, um, you know, to kind of make it a little bit more demanding. But the, the, the rep scheme is small to start and then obviously increases as you go throughout. So, you know, it allows people to kind of chip away at some of this stuff, but it's very CrossFit open-esque where you have what I like to call almost like a reverse chipper where it starts low and then goes to high and can kind of bait you into going out too fast so that's kind of something to think about here is like manageable sets even from the beginning because if you're you're good enough to get into the later rounds um things could get a little bit dicey if especially on the handstand push-ups because those could go when they when they go they're hard to get back um and so if you come out too hot and do too big of sets you can end up staring at the wall for a while yeah and what i really like about this workout i, I like workouts that depending on who you are you'll get bottleneck by different movement. Like you're probably going to have two types of people, either somebody who the barbell slows them down or somebody where the handstand pushups slow them down. Obviously it could be both, but usually it's like, you know, you're either better at one or the other. Um, so like that barbell 275, 185 is just like a, a heavy load for you to be cycling that many times. Like as you get deeper into the, the rounds or like your handstand pushups start to go and it's like, you got to like race your way, deadlift, double or uh, crossover back to get back to the wall so that you can like, kind of stack a lot of your rest into that portion of it so like pretty quickly it'll become about like spending the majority of the time on like one movement so for example like w you can see that he's like grinding through the deadlifts a little bit more then it's like he can pretty quickly get on the jump rope move through the wall quickly and then it's like back to the deadlifts as quickly as you can so that you can take that like front-loaded rest of it and that's also under the assumption that someone can do these crossovers decently efficiently um we actually it's funny we actually had crossovers in our class at at the gyms uh where i work programmed by yours truly again <laughs> and um it's so funny to see people who in a class setting really good athletes that like can't do crossovers and they're tripping all the time athletes who take class consistently right yeah. so you're you're not really seeing that skill and they can't do it and then people who i you know the, the class i took there was a guy who almost brand new. He had been at the gym for maybe two weeks. No problem with the crossovers. Like just so there's a possibility to get kind of bottleneck there too if you haven't practiced that skill. It's a good point. 
I've been giving a lot of athletes crossover practice, so I think, but but in, also it's it's probably true that like if athletes don't have super refined double unders yet, I'm probably not giving them a lot of crossover work just because I want them to get double unders first because that's gonna be tested way more often. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I was looking at his uh, cycle speed on his reps, and he was pretty much right on one second a rep when he's moving through those, which is, like, ridiculously quick. It helps to have a, a strong upper body. I've never met this individual, but he looks – he doesn't he doesn't look to be a, a stout individual, uh, so he's not, <laughs> not super big and, uh, and, and not long-limbed either. So it's like, okay, not a big range of motion. I'm light and strong. You're going to be really fast. Yeah. And uh, – I don't think in, I don't think he was in wrestling season as this video was being recorded, but he's in wrestling season now, and so like we, Chris and I were talking about this because we both wrestled. It was like strength to body weight ratio is typically pretty high in most wrestlers who are like in the the lower to middle weight classes, especially. So it's like a lot of those gymnastic moves just come easy because like that's that's like what you do all the time in wrestling is manipulate your own body weight or somebody else's. Somebody else's, yeah. So is he is he a light like what is he wrestling at? Oh, man. I want to say, like, I don't know what the exact weight class would be, like, 120-ish. Okay, got it. So, yeah, it's it's not like it's not like he's a, a high school linebacker or or tackle, and so he's able to really kind of bang out those handstand push-ups. So I'm sure, he, I'm sure he's also good in a lot of those other body weight movements as well. Yeah, for sure. But he's hammering these deadlifts, man. He's really chipping away at them. You know, it, it put it, putting things in perspective, you know, you said he's wrestling, what, 126, you said? I, I, I don't even think it's that much. I think it's in the – I think he was debating between two weight classes, so I think he might be like 121 or something in the weight class. Okay, so let's assume he's a little bit heavier here. Let's call it 130 pounds, right? He's deadlifting he's way – <laughs> <laughs> But What's still, that? either way. He's definitely not that much here. Okay, so – but he's deadlifting way over that as a high school – What? how old is he, 15, 16 15. years old? Yeah. yeah, so he's really he's really handling that 180 bar 185 bar pretty well. Yeah, and the the good thing I'd like is that like even as it gets heavy, it the weight begins to bog down a bit, but the positions aren't really breaking down. It's not like he's getting into like that really rounded position through the spine like we see a lot of people get in, especially like younger athletes who haven't had as much like time just to like develop like really good movement patterns. So that's just props to uh, him being detail oriented. He's super good about giving feedback and stuff, like a lot better than a lot of my like adult clients, frankly. So like, there's like a lot of things that he does that are you can tell he just like is a uh, good at paying attention to details and like asking questions and that sort of stuff. So yeah, and that's a great point. That as a coach, it's like okay, cool. Like this this weight or movement is physically getting hard, but your positions are not breaking down, so you're in a good good spot to continue to drive through this workout as opposed to like you said you're finishing up a workout and it's just like oh god are we gonna blow a disc on this last deadlift because you're just rounding you look like a turtle basically you know <laughs> pooping <Wow>. dog <laughs> the pooping dog front <laughs> squat every time it's not what you um, want it's not what you want no it's not <laughs> um yeah but like as a coach like that yeah, this that kind of fires me up is because like you me, can i just really basically like pour fire on a movement, right? It's like what I call it. Like you can train the movement versus like having to like do like a bunch of progressions to the point where you can then tr actually train the movement. Like we can give him deadlift progressions because he's gonna like respond to deadlifts as he should and he's not gonna get injured because he has good positions. Right, like, exactly. If you have an athlete and they're either not able to hold good positions or they don't understand how to move so they're not in good positions, it's like you first have to teach them how to move and then you can begin to load the movement and it's gonna break down at certain times so then you have to pull back and kind of like relearn it. So like the fact that you can just train the movement, like as simple as that sounds, it's like most people aren't in that boat, which is really nice when you get people who can like, they can do that for most of the movements. And that's a compliment to W. Yeah, he's a uh, competing as we're recording this, um, Fist of the Coast this weekend. So, uh oh, he'll yeah, see uh, Courtney. Will be there. Yeah, he'll see Courtney. He'll see Jeremy. He'll see a couple other people from uh, our our gyms. But so, Courtney yeah, and Jeremy we'll be, are both we'll my be clients. represented down there. Heck so, yeah, we're about be, to be the be cool. fittest of the coast. <laughs> You're oh. So last three minutes here, and. I, I've actually written a lot of this type of stuff for both individual design as well as our 
uh, gym, and it seems like just by the nature of this kind of workout, it's like everybody gets like one of those rounds where it's like the round of 12 with the round of 15. It's like all of a sudden the workout just slows down. It's like everything goes in slow motion because you have so many reps that like that one movement that's challenging for you, like we mentioned earlier. So like either it's like, oh man, I'm down to doing singles and doubles on these handstand pushups or oh, I'm down to doing singles and doubles on the barbell. And that's Mm -hmm. just like sort of the nature of where you're at and like staying engaged in that last three, four minutes when you could just be on like a single move in the entire time. It's like really important for like, if we think about towards like the, the season itself and like, uh, like a quarterfinal style test, like becomes super important. Cause like every single rep in that kind of stuff is like big, big point separators. Well, yeah, in a workout like this, it's really easy, especially for inexperienced athletes. And, and maybe this is an overgeneralization, but I would assume for younger athletes, at least in the sport, I mean, you know, he might not be a young athlete in the sport necessarily versus his age, but is like in the beginning of a workout like this, you can get goaded into the thought of whether you realize it or not, like I am crushing this workout. Like I am just blasting through these sets. And then the next thing you know, you hit the round of, you know, uh, 21 deadlifts or 24 handstand pushups. And you're like, where'd they go? (laughs) I I have 17 of these left. How am I going to even finish this? And then you just see the clock running away from you and ticking away. And it's very easy to get into like, I, I, I'm getting crushed right now. And it's just like, no, that's kind of the nature of the beast. Like that's just the design of the workout is you're going to hit that at some point. And so who can stay mentally engaged and stay in rhythm and stay on pace? Um, and on mission to just keep chipping away at the reps because you're going to hit a movement that does that. So this is completely off topic, but I just thought of it and I think Chris would uh, find it hilarious. I can't wait. Uh, um, <laughs> he was doing a, a qualifier for the fitness of the coast. It was like, it was like 10 rounds of like three clean or three shoulder oh. overhead from the floor. Yes. And mm, I want to say was box jump overs. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like a really like short, high power, like, I don't know, somewhere between like Grace and Fran type effort. <laughs> and he was like setting up to do his uh, <laughs> clean and jerks and just puked. <laughs> Did a rep to like a little bit more came out. His mom's like cleaning it up as he's like continuing <laughs> to do box jump over. So it was like, it was so awesome. Like I wasn't even like grossed out. I was just like impressed that he kept going. Like didn't even skip a beat. Wait, was he just cleaning like... <laughs> yeah, it was like as he was getting set, it was just like puke was coming out. Uh, oh, he's the best then. I don't even know this guy. And he's the best. <laughs> yeah, I feel like us wrestlers just find that stuff hilarious for some reason. Good job, W. But yeah, you can uh, definitely see that was a uh, full effort there. So well done. Alrighty, folks, it's that time. Be sure to submit your scores to the leaderboard at zorfitness.com slash TNG. You're more than welcome to share this and take it on with some friends and best of luck on the workout.